Hello, and welcome to our show. I'm your host, Jan. Father's Day is June 16th, and I think the dads in your life, granddad, uncle, would really love a card that you made by hand just for them. And we have an idea. It's long, but it fits into an envelope. And I'll show you what it looks like. It'll take a minute to pull it out. It's a garland. And this garland can say whatever you want. This one says, best dad ever. So you can take this to a wall, or you can display it on a table. I think it's very festive. Now, it can be any message you want. It can be short, or it can be very long. This is the classic Happy Father's Day. Now, you could say, Happy Father's Day, we'll love you forever, or something like that. You can make it really, really long. But it's your choice. It can also be really short. So I'm going to give you an idea of how to do this. It's easy, it's inexpensive, and great fun. So the first thing we need is something for the background, the, the circles. It should be cardstock or two pieces of paper that have been glued together, say, with a glue stick. You need something like a glass or something to trace around. Now, the inside of a piece of tape or something like a lid is really fast, and that's my favorite thing. You need a pair of scissors to cut out the circles, a pencil is optional, a ruler is optional. You'll need something to string these together. So something very soft is handy. It can also be string or very thin ribbon. Those all work well. Now to make the letters, we're going to need contrast paper. It can be multiple colors or it can be one contrast color. The cardstock can also be plain old white. That also works really well. Now, if you don't want to cut, hand cut these letters, you can use stickers. So this is another idea. But I'm going to show you how to cut out the letters because it's easier than you can imagine. So the first thing I do is cut a strip of paper. That's why I usually measure it with a ruler. I do it about half the size of the circle. This is a little bit larger, but I'm going to use that anyway. After you've drawn all your circles, I do a demo with the lid. See, see, it just goes really fast. And I'll do one with a tape roll. Now, it's got to be the size you want. See how fast that is? It's faster than drawing around a glass or something like that. But they all work. So I have cut a strip of paper to make a letter. And I'm going to do the word dad because it's short. <laughs> so first of all, I cut a square just to get the letter started. Now, dad has one straight edge and then two curved, the D, and then two curved corners. So I will curve those corners. Now, you can do it just like this and glue it on. And I think it'll still read as a D. But if you want to cut the middle out, you can either use a hole punch to get it to be able to put your scissors in there, or you can sort of gently fold it in half and just give it a snip or two. And then you have access to the middle. Now you might want to use smaller scissors. Naturally, these are the ones that I brought. But cutting out the inside um, it's just an option. As I said, you don't have to. But I'll keep on cutting until I think this is pretty much the way I want it. And that's not too bad. <laughs> so now I'm going to glue it just to show you do this with each letter. Now you do want one circle for each letter of the, um, of your, of the words that you're doing. And I'm going to glue it like that. So there's dad. And I think I'll use another color. There's the D. I'll use another color for the 
second letter. And A has two angles and then a leg. So that's the start. And I'll cut the legs. And I'm not going to bother, I think, with the open section. Hope you can see what I'm doing. So there's an A. And I'll glue that on. And then I'll do one more D. And I'll do a different color. So just cut a square. And then cut the two round edges off for a D. And I'll show you another idea. Since we're going to glue this down, we can also cut it like that and cut the inside out. Because we're going to glue it down. So cut it like that. And then when it's glued down, it will be just fine. And remember, you have to turn the letter over to glue it. And then reverse it when you glue it. So there is dad. And that's the idea for the letters, if you can see that. Dad, that's the fastest thing. Now, if he has a nickname like Pops or Pop Pop, you could also do that. Now, you do want to do one letter or one circle that's either blank or has a heart. I'll show this to you again. In between the letters so that you can really read it, makes it more legible. Now, if he's a golfer, instead of a heart, you could do a golf ball. If he loves to fish, it could be a very simple fish in the little spacer or a heart, whatever you like. So I think I will show this one again. I hope you have a very happy Father's Day and enjoy making your own garland. Thank you for joining us. We'd love to see you for the next show. It'll be a totally different craft. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome to our show. I'm your host, Jan. On July 4th, we will celebrate or commemorate our American independence from Great Britain in 1776 when the Declaration of Independence was signed. We celebrate this national holiday with picnics, parades, and fireworks, my favorite. It is, or will be, a very hot summer's day. So we thought a fan that you could tuck into your pocket might be a handy thing to have on hand. Now this is called a pinwheel fan. See, it folds from nothing into something like this. This is made with three sheets of paper, colored paper. But another idea is to use white paper and, do I have this right, say yes, and decorate it with markers. Easy, inexpensive, and fun to make. So what you need to do this, to make this, is to have three sheets of paper, just plain old paper. It can be colors, red, white, and blue is patriotic, or it can be all white. You know, it's, they're all good. And the first step, I've tested different sizes of paper to make a fan that gives you enough of a handle. And if you use a full sheet of paper, you're not gonna have much handle. So what I recommend is trimming about an inch or an inch and a half, you know, with a pair of scissors off each sheet of paper you're going to use. The next step is to decorate it. Now the long way of the paper is the border at the top. This is, you know, like it's the border like this. So I recommend cutting, folding this in half because it helps mark where the center is of the paper. You know, so you can do your design. It might help you with it. And also, it's going to help because in the end, we're going to fold this in half. So it helps the paper do that. So I like to use a ruler to mark my design, but you don't have to. If you make a border along the edge, that's your guideline. 
so it's going to turn out so that everything is matching when you fold it up. Now the next step is to do an accordion fold. These are accordion folds. I've made them one inch deep, but anywhere between half an inch and an inch is going to work. So that's your choice. So I have marked one inch on here. And I'm going to start folding this accordion style. One inch back and forth like this. Now I've already marked it. You probably can't see it, but that's fine. Just back and forth. Give it a little press also. We want a nice crease. So it's going to help it fold better like that. So now we have something that looks like this. The next step is to fold this in half like that and glue these together, this V here. I like to use a glue stick, but also any kind of glue, hot glue, anything you like works. So I'm just going to glue these together. Any kind of glue here. I think that white glue, that would be my other choice. And you want to try and match the top if possible. And then give it a good press. When I glue things, I often let them set up a little bit before I take the next stage. So I've done two already. You want three segments, one from the, each one from a sheet of paper. Now I'm going to glue these together. So I've got everything in order. The colors are in order. See if you can see that. And I'm going to glue these together. So I'm going to just glue one side. Give it a nice solid glue. And then press these together like that. Matching the top as much you, as you can. And then give these a good press. Now at home what I do is put a rubber band over these. So it really, really holds for the uh, holes overnight or for a few hours. The next step is to take a craft stick. These are about eight inches long. And I want to glue it to the side. So I think white glue holds it a little bit better. Place the craft stick all the way to the top and then give it a good press. So it looks like this. Then do the other side. A nice bit of glue, the other craft stick, and it is good to put it all the way to the top. It helps the fan fold a bit better. See? And then I put a rubber band around here and let it really set overnight. But I'm going to try and open it right now. This could be a blooper to try and give you an idea of what it looks like. So here we go. Will this work? Will this hold together enough? There you go. So there's your fan. You can decorate them with stars and borders. You can also use paint if you want. I just used two markers because it was so easy. So whatever you like, you can make your own patriotic fan. Let's see if I can fan it. Yes, I think it's OK. So happy July 4th. I hope you really enjoy making your own fan, a pinwheel fan that's patriotic. So we'd love to see you for the next show, which will have a totally different craft. Thank you for joining us. Bye bye. Hello and welcome to our show. I'm your host, Jan. Paint has been, well, has existed for thousands of years. It's made, sometimes made from dirt in the old days or rust or precious gemstones that have been ground. Now it's a lot easier and paint fascinates me. It's made usually with four components, modern day paint anyway. Pigment, that's the color. 
resin, which helps hold the pigment together, a filler, which gives the paint body, and then a liquid, such as water, for water-based paint, that helps make us be able to paint with it, gives a nice thickness. And paint makes paintings, obviously, and painting, paintings rank very high in the art world. There's many different styles. There's realistic, there's stylized like cubism, there's avant-garde, there's abstract. And this is contemporary art. And I'll show you how to do this. It has a very funny name. It has, is called squeegee art or scrape art because we're going to put some paint, drop paint, on the paper or cardstock and then scrape it with something like this, which is used in baking, but this is an old one, so it works well, or an old credit card, or even a piece of very firm cardboard that's from the back of a tablet. A squeegee is what you use to clean showers and windows with, and that's for big ones, big paintings. So we're going to do a little one to show you the technique. You can use white paper, colored paper. This is construction paper. You can do something like a rainbow. I'll show you a couple of different ideas. So it is messy, but we're going to do it anyway. OK, so we're, I've got a piece of cardstock taped down with scrap paper underneath. I've used masking tape. You can also use, it's got low tack, meaning it won't rip the paper up when you take it off. You can also use painter's tape. So that's the idea. So I'm going to use this one because this is slightly bigger than the paper I'm using. So I'm going to do drops of paint and hope it looks good. You can also do swiggles like that. Whatever you want, everyone is going to turn out differently. You can use as many colors as you want. I haven't decided how many I'm going to make. I'm just going to keep on going. But you can see it's very random. Very random, very quick. Now for the third color, I think I'll use yellow. Always give it a nice shake. I think I'll do that. And just for fun, I'll add one more color. Oh no, I've decided I won't. Okay, so you put the scraper at the top. I'm putting it on the tape and then just gently pull down. And it makes that fun combination. And this leaves some paint on the scraper so you want to wipe it. That's how quick and easy this is. And then when that dries a little bit, you can take the tape off. Let's see if what happens if I do this now. So I'll start doing this. And hopefully it doesn't tear the paper. Tape not only holds the paper down, it gives it a nice clean edge. Put this over here. And now you can see why it's nice to have a scrap of paper underneath to catch the excess. See how nice and clean this looks. Now I just have two more pieces left. Take this off. This can be, and when it's lightweight paper, you can make a card with it. This just gives you an idea what it looks like. That is what I call modern art. Now I did get some on the back, so I'm going to be really careful. And you can see how the tape gives it a nice clean edge. I'm just going to put this over here. And you can also slightly bigger piece. To do something curved like this, you can put some paint on the side. And this you do one color at a time.
and I'm going to make two dots and I put the paint on the tape and then I'll use I think I will use a credit card just to show you how that works because this is bigger than the paint so I think I'm going to do something like that now I do have to wipe this off before I go to the next color so I just do baby wipes can be an old towel or old rag but this works really well to take it off now because I've scraped it the paint is pretty much dry so I'm going to do maybe another one the other direction I think I'll just put one dot here and see how this goes I think I'll go this direction and see how you can go over the color because you've scraped it off it's pretty much dry It's just fun to do. You want to make many of these, I bet. Let's see, what's missing here? I think I'll do yellow here. I think I'll do three yellows and see what happens, see what that looks like. See how well the credit card worked? Now I'm going to scoop. So that's the idea. Now you can make as many as you like. If it's um, paper, you can make a greeting card with it, or make something to hang on the wall. But that is squeegee art or scrape art. Now you can be an artist. Thank you for joining us. Please come back for the next show because we'll have something totally different. So, bye-bye.